Hello, bookworms. Welcome back to our channel. I'm Icy. And I'm Ivy. And we are Mangos and Books. Have you ever read a book so mind-blowing that you have to talk about it? Which is why I have to talk about Thunderhead. Thunderhead by, by Neil Shusterman. So if you haven't watched our book talk for sight, maybe you should watch that first and come back to this video. So Thunderhead is book number two in the Arc of a Scythe series by Neil Shusterman. So in Scythe, we focused on the Scythes and the Scythedom. And we also got glimpses of the Thunderhead, which we all know is uh, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. or known as like the cloud, where everything is stored, everything in history, everything that happens in the world, even everyone. Like everything on social media recorded <clears throat> in the CCTV cameras everywhere is uploaded into the Thunderhead. Not only that, but the Thunderhead is also like a, an all-knowing figure. I wouldn't say God. It's all knowing and it's always correct. It knows everything and it can kind of control like equipment and sometimes even the weather. It can influence technology around us. People can actually talk to the Thunderhead and ask for advice and the Thunderhead will respond straight away and give you the most accurate accurate the Thunderhead mm -hmm. is never wrong. So in this book we still follow Citra, Rowan, Scythe Faraday and Scythe Curie. And then we come across this new character called Grayson Tolliver. Grayson Tolliver was pretty much raised by the Thunderhead because of I'm not even sure why his parents are looking after him. But anyway, the Thunderhead pretty much raised Grayson from he was an infant to when he was a teenager. So the Thunderhead is pretty much his parent. Grayson plays a pretty important role in this book. And when you look at the back of the book, it says Thunderhead sees everything, but it, it does not like what it sees. So that's the spoiler-free synopsis of Thunderhead. And if you haven't read it yet, please, please read it. Please. You will please. not regret it. Please read it and come back. I think Scythe and Thunderhead are very good books for discussion. <laughs> nice. See you all. Welcome back. <laughs> so as we were saying, the Thunderhead sees everything and it does not like what it sees. Why doesn't it like what it sees? Let's start with this new character <coughs> named Grayson Tolliver. So Grayson Tolliver is a teenager who was raised by the Thunderhead because his parents didn't pay much attention to him while growing up. So basically the Thunderhead was his parent. He looks up to the Thunderhead like a parent. And, and the Thunderhead looks after him basically. And like he takes pictures of, of him during his graduation because his parents weren't there. Remember that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the Thunderhead was basically there for every important event in Grayson's life. So I, I think the Thunderhead is trying to look after Citra who is now Scythe Anastasia. But the Thunderhead can't really interfere with anything related to Scythe's. Grayson is kind of the the means to save Citra and Kiri from this, <coughs> the, from this, <laughs> an ambush attack planned by I don't know who. So Grayson was gonna get into the Nimbus Academy, trained to be a Nimbus agent. I think it's the people who work directly under the Thunderhead who enforce peace in the specific area they're in. Grayson wanted to be a Nimbus agent, and so. Before he started in the academy, he was called to the office or whatever to talk to one of the agents and that's where he learned that Citra and Marie Curie's life are in danger. I think he was working as undercover to stop whatever was gonna happen to Citra and Scythe Curie. Grayson goes to the place where bomb was planted and he decides to splat on Citra and Curie's car which is... <gasps> To save them from the blast. The blast. The blast. And then Marie, Kiri, and Citra knew that their lives were in danger. So they had to flee. They had to keep moving like every other day to a new place. So that the people who are after them will track them down. Yeah, and thanks to Grayson, they were able to escape that blast. 
as a Nimbus agent, you cannot do that. So he was he wasn't accepted at, at the Nimbus Academy anymore, and he was considered as an unsavory. Unsavory are the people who who are rebels who don't follow the Thunderhead. Grayson becoming an unsavory shows us the world of the unsavories, where there's very dark and scary. They're not exactly criminals, but they're people who go against the system, which yeah. is the Thunderhead. The Thunderhead doesn't speak to these unsavories, and their IDs, everyone has an ID, and their IDs have a capital U. A big change for Grayson, because he was always dependent on the Thunderhead, and now he's by himself. He cannot talk to the Thunderhead anymore, so it's kind of sad. He was depressed. Mm. He was lost, and lost. he went on his wayward ways. And he had a girlfriend named Purity who mm. was into dangerous stuff. The Thunderhead like makes an environment for yeah. unsavories. So Rowan... So Rowan considered a sight Lucifer. He wears black. He has the power to kill corrupted sites by fire. We also see Rowan's friend, Tiger, and he visited Rowan to deliver a message that a site gleaned his father. Since the winter conclave in the previous book, he escaped and he had immunity, so the site killed his father. I don't know, revenge or something. But it was a trap. Yeah. Tiger was being used by Scythe Rand and Scythe Goddard, who are still alive after all that beheading and burning in the Tony's church in the first book. So it, there was a trap, because you know how Rowan was, was pretty much Scythe Lucifer who was killing corrupted Scythe and Scythe Rand saw an opportunity to trap Rowan, capture <laughs> him, and now she has Tiger as well, who is Rowan's best friend from the first book. She told Tiger that she was going to take him as an apprentice and train him. And little did he know that she had Rowan with her as well. So they kind of were they, sparring. Yeah, Rowan didn't let Tiger win. I was so shocked that Goddard is still alive. It was so gross. Because only his head survived. I don't know how that worked. Scythrand ended up killing Tiger and putting another head on Tiger's body. Mm. Ew. So Rand was alive. Yeah, she was by still alive. And then he took Goddard's head. She probably took Goddard's head from the yucky bowl. Yuck. And that's when Scythe Goddard starts to emerge again. So it was like a, a big surprise, like a grand entrance every time. Before we get to the end, we move on. On to see Citra as Scythe Anastasia and how she's developed into a Scythe. And she's learned so much from Scythe Faraday and Scythe Curie and how she gleans people. She gives them 30 days to sort their affairs before she gleans them when and how they want to. She's very compassionate. And Rowan became Scythe Lucifer maybe because he saw the difference between Scythe Faraday and Scythe Goddard when he was taken as apprentice under both of them in the same year. So he wanted to stop all of that bad Scythe stuff. All of the corrupt sites. But as we all know, Scythe Faraday is still alive and he went to where Rowan was staying and he said, this is not gonna change anything because there are always gonna be bad people. So Citra and Rowan haven't actually seen each other, but Citra has heard of Scythe Lucifer and Citra has always been with Scythe Curry and they've been uh, inseparable. And we remember in book one where Citra talked to the Thunderhead and the Thunderhead told her that she was going to play an important part in the history of Scythe. Everyone's been saying the same thing, like Scythe Curie, Scythe Faraday, and some of the Scythes in the Conclave. Was that Scythe Constantine? So Scythe Faraday is still considered dead to the Scythe and he's been hiding. What he's been doing, like with all the Scythe dramas, and corrupt stuff. He decides to do some research on something from the beginning of Scythedom where I think it's a book or a manual that tells them what to do in case things go wrong in the Scythedom. So he goes to Israelia, to a library, a really really old library there, and he does a lot of research. And then that's where he met Munira. 
who used to be a science apprentice and then he took her under her wing so he could have an extra pair of hands in researching all of these exciting things and that's when they discovered something i don't know what but they kind of know where to find it back to goddard goddard who is still alive we were all shook that he was still alive mm -hmm. he was revived by rat Scythran. So Scythran had a thing for Tiger, I, I think only for his body. Towards the end of the book, not towards the end, but somewhere there, Ran had the hearts for Goddard. Mm -hmm. Since maybe she was an apprentice, she looked up to him, thought that he's so cool, he's the greatest, and then... <laughs> And she never knew that she would fall in love with him. So that <laughs> one night he went to Goddard's room. Yeah. <laughs> she took off her clothes and Goddard was like, What the fuck? He was like, What are you doing? Mm, no. Yeah. You're better than that girl. I know. And then we fast forward to the bit where High Blade Sinocrates is gonna move up to Supreme Blade. So they need a new High Blade of Mid America. So the Grand Slayer of Mid America was going to self clean. Whoever's the High Blade in Mid America was gonna get promoted to the Grand Slayer. There was an election of who's gonna be High Blade in Mid America. And then there was at a conclave where Citra and Kiri were. Everyone was like, I nominate Sad Kiri, I nominate Sad Kiri, I nominate Sad Kiri. And then, surprise, surprise, Goddard makes an um, entrance and everyone was like, wah, 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 What's happening? What's happening? Blues. He got nominated by Scythe Brams. And then Citra challenged the nomination for Goddard because it was only Goddard's head on a stranger's body. So she was like, but that's only 7% gutter. Yeah. So he has to be trained to become an apprentice again, like one year. And then Goddard felt, of course, being the obnoxious thing that he is, he couldn't really accept that. We go to Endura where crazy stuff happens. But there's no cameras, Thunderhead cameras in Endura. I think it's like a few kilometers away. Because Endura. Endura is a site run island where the Supreme Blades live. There's no Thunderhead stuff, so everything is run by people. Endura is the island of the enduring heart. So we see that everything is technologically backwards here. Everything was under maintenance, everything was slow. There were glitches in the elevator. No thunder had to fix things. And then people are like, what's this? What's happening? Despite being a scythe island, no one can, can be gleaned on that island. People visit the island like normal people, regular people. Uh -huh. But no one can be gleaned. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then we meet all the Grand Slayers, which is pretty cool. Very cool. So the highest of the sites is Supreme Blade Kahlo. Where's she from? South America. So there's seven thrones, I think. One for every Supreme Blade from every continent. Which is Pan-Asia, Euros, Scandia, Antarctica, Antarctica Australia. Australia, South America, North America, and Africa. In Pan-Asia, we have Site Hideyoshi, Euros, Kenya, Site Cromwell, Antarctica, Site Uminsen, Australia, Site Mackillop, so Australian. Is it? It's one of the Australian saints. Mm. Catherine Mackillop. Mm. So the Supreme Blade also takes place of the Grand Slayer's throne in his continent. In South America, we also have Sait Kahlo. She handles the... She's like the boss. Boss. boss the very boss. The very boss, but also Grand Slayer of South America. <laughs> North America, obviously, Sait Sinocrates. Africa, Sait Nzinga. Supreme Blade Kahlo is the 8th World Supreme Blade of Sait Dung. There's also the thrones in the World Council Chamber, which is pretty interesting as it represents each continent. All of the Supreme Blades have their own throne, which is made of like a stone or an element specific to that continent. Panasia Jade, green whitish thing. Euroscandia chiseled grey granite. Antarctica white marble like ice. Australia, red sandstone of Ayers Rock. 
South America Pink Onyx, North America Shell and Limestone, like the Grand Canyon. And Africa, ooh, intricately carved cartouches taken from the tomb of Ramses. So it says in the book that the thrones are not supposed to be comfortable, like the Game of Thrones throne. Iron throw. They're not supposed to be comfortable because, of course, your job is to kill people. They're yeah. not supposed to take comfort in that. Yeah. And so, like we said earlier, so much crazy <laughs> stuff happens in Endura so, because Sinocrates was stepping up to Supreme Blade, and we've got Scythe Curie and Goddard fighting for a High Blade. They had to face the world supremely. Yeah, because it was an issue, it was just Goddard's head. And Sinocrates was like, I don't know what to do. So he escalated that issue to the High Blades, to the Supreme Blades of the world, to discuss. Scythe Curie and Anastasia are there to argue that Scythe Goddard's resurrection and grand re-entrance to the Scythe party is actually not right. And so they have to go and escalate the issue to the Supreme Blades. Scythe Curie and Anastasia and Scythe Goddard and Rand are there on Endura. And guess who else is there? Ooh. Scythe Lucifer oh. is there as well. Goddard and Rand wanted to make a point. I don't know. I don't no, know what they were I trying think, to prove. I think they want to surprise the Grand Slayers that they've got Scythe Lucifer. Yeah. And that would probably give Goddard more points. Yeah. And or then, some shit like but that. then, since the issue coming back to Scythe Rand and Scythe Goddard. Love. Since she was rejected by Goddard, so she let Rowan escape. And Goddard was looking for Rowan to show to the High Blades. He's like, Gah! he was he furious. Out. And, and then, then Scythe Rowan was like, you can still go. Doesn't matter. Uh -huh. That's when a lot of crazy stuff starts to happen. Suddenly the island starts to flood because of the glitches. We don't know if it's Goddard's idea that the island was sinking. No, it was his idea. Remember, he hired those engineers and everyone who maintains the island and he hired them to screw everything up and even the sea creatures attack the people on the island. There were people who got away by plane but a lot were trapped including the seven supreme blades. They were trapped in the world council. And some chamber of secrets. <laughs> That's when people start dying. Even the seven supreme blades and then so the throne room was <laughs> getting flooded. And then you know how the sea life was programmed to eat, eat the people. And it was going after the supreme blades. Sinocrates was like, oh, I will I will die by my own will. And he drowned himself. He sank to the bottom. Scythe Theory does something heroic for Citra and Rowan. So she leads them to the vault, an airtight vault within an airtight vault, and she seals Rowan and Citra in there and it sinks to the bottom along with everything. And Scythe Theory gleans herself and everyone. Such a tragic end. And the ending ending of that is the Thunderhead gets so angry. It's so furious about what was happening in Endura. It couldn't see, but it could like feel the island sinking into the Thunderhead. <laughs> the Thunderhead raised alarms everywhere. The like, tonists mm -hmm. were like, oh, great resonance. And then everyone else was, what's happening? And everyone was marked as unsavory, except for Grace and Tolliver. And that's how the book ends. Hey, Grace, we need to talk. So anyway, we have a few points of discussion. One, I was thinking, if the Thunderhead can foresee things, so why did the Thunderhead make Grayson do all that undercover stuff and then mark him unsavory and let him do things on his own? Was the Thunderhead testing him? But what was all of that for? interesting point to see on the next book. Another thing that wasn't made clear was who plotted the bomb at Citra and Curie's the house. Bomb. And it wasn't really made clear who wanted them dead. It was like just rumors about Scythe Constantine but no one admitted. Scythe Rand didn't admit to anything. Goddard didn't admit to anything. So who was that? Why? 
Okay, come back to Scythe Faraday, which gives us a little bit of hope for the next book because he's still dead to the Scythum, so no one knows he's alive. Anyone aside from Scythe Curie who's now have cleaned herself, Citra and Rowan who are in the bottom of the ocean, sea. and just Scythe Faraday and Munira. So what's gonna happen? I think Grayson, Scythe Faraday, Munira will play a big role a in the next role. book. And the Scythum will be like, what? Faraday's alive? And I, I think... My blade! <gasps> I think Goddard's gonna be world supreme. And Goddard, so what scary. is he gonna do? Good. He makes a good bad guy. I think what's gonna take Goddard by surprise is Scythe Faraday. And the knowledge that he is taken from the land of none. But I don't know what Grayson's role in all of this is. Maybe he'll be like... The Thunderhead's helping Scythe yeah. Faraday. To Grayson. Yeah, to Grayson. Maybe. Who knows what's gonna be in the book? And you know how Citra wore like Cleopatra's robe and then Rowan wore Scythe Prometheus' robe and they'll be found like that. Hopefully they'll be found. I'm sure. When are they gonna when? Get, How is Faraday gonna figure all of that out? That he might be like, oh, they might be dead. And they're at the very bottom, so hopefully someone will... Like all of those so bodies who were like... Think then by marine life, people who have searched the area will be like, oh, maybe they've been eaten. Mm -hmm. I think to search bodies one by one. So I don't know, that's important point. So, and Sight Sinocrates might still be revived. If he was just drowned. Yeah. But if he was torn apart by sharks, that's a different story. What will happen? So excited for the it's a waiting book. game. It's a waiting game, but could be worth it. So right now, I haven't even finished a good book after reading it. Yeah, I'm on a reading slump too. The books I borrowed from the library, I haven't even read one of them. So what do you think will happen in the... Do you have any book? interesting theories? Anything you want to share? Will Goddard be the supreme? Is he gonna library? create a new Scythe Empire under his rule? It's gonna be a disaster. Faraday, help us. What do you think will happen in the third book? Write them out on the comments below and let's start a little discussion there. Let's talk about it please. I haven't moved on. It's been a month. <gasps> That's mm -hmm. all we have for you today with heavy hearts. <laughs> <laughs> please like and subscribe our videos and don't forget to comment your thoughts on this book. Bye! Bye. Oh, 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 oh,